Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Jason from Code Monkeys, and in this video we're going to be looking at the leak code problem, remove duplicates from sorted array. Now as always, there's going to be a link in the description for a GitHub repo. It's going to have all the code and all the notes that we go over in this video. And I'm also going to include a link for a Discord chat so you can go there and ask questions. And be sure to ask questions in the comments below. And also, at any point in the video, if you feel like you can solve the problem, then be sure to pause it and give it a shot. And um, yeah, so let's get into it. All right, so in this problem, we're given an integer array nums sorted in non-decreasing order. And we want to remove the duplicates in our array in place such that each unique element appears only once and the relative order of the elements should be kept the same. Okay. And since it is impossible to change the length of the array in some languages, then we must instead have the result be placed in the first part of the array nums. Uh, more formally, they tell us that if there are k elements after removing the duplicates, then the first k elements of nums should hold the final result. And it does not matter what we leave beyond the first k elements. Okay, and then they tell us to return k after placing the final result in the first k slots of nums. And then they also tell us to uh, that we cannot allocate extra space for another array. And we must do this by modifying the input array in place with big O of one extra memory. And then they give us a judge down here telling us how our code is going to be judged. And then down here they give us some examples. And here we have an input nums and it's one one two and then the output is going to be two and our nums array that we're going to get is one two and then they give us an underscore here and here's their explanation they say your function should return k is equal to two with the first two elements of nums being one and two respectively and it does not matter what you leave beyond the returned k hence they are underscores so these values over here don't matter as long as we get these values correct and down here they give us another example so zero zero and then three ones and then two twos and then two threes and then a four and then the output is five and nums is going to be zero one two three four and then the rest underscores and they tell us that our function should return k is equal to five with the first five elements of nums being zero one two three and four respectively so in that order and it does not matter what you leave beyond the return k and then they give us the underscores again and then we have some constraints, which is that nums, the length of nums is going to be greater than or equal to zero, and it's going to be less than or equal to three times 10 to the fourth. And our values for our nums are going to be greater than or equal to negative 100 and less than or equal to 100. And also that nums is sorted in non-decreasing order. All right, guys. So give the problem a shot, and then we can get into my implementation. All right, guys, so hopefully you were able to come up with a solution for the problem. And now before getting into my implementation, we're going to look over my thought process and then we're going to go over, you know, the uh, the description of the problem again, just to clear up any confusion anyone may have had and to just kind of go over it again because it was a lot of uh, information they gave us in it. All right, so again, the assumptions that we have is that we have an integer array nums and that we our uh, integer array nums has a length that's greater than or equal to zero, and it's going to be less than or equal to three times 10 to the fourth. All right. And it is sorted in non-decreasing order. All right. And then they give us this term in place. All right. So what does in place mean? So in place means that we have an algorithm that transforms input using no auxiliary data structure. All right. So what does that mean? So that means that we cannot allocate extra space for another array a hash table or any other data structure. All right, so another way of saying this is saying that we must use big O of one extra memory. All right, so kind of like how they told us down here. All right, so when we're solving this, we can't make another array, we can't make a hash table, we can't use any other data structure. We can only use the array that they have given us. All right, so now to just kind of clear up any confusion someone may have had about removing or moving the duplicates and then maintaining the relative order. So in JavaScript, we can change the length of an array by adding or removing elements. All right, but in other languages like C, for example, we cannot change the length of an array after it's been created. Okay, so in JavaScript, we could implement a solution where we remove the elements from it and then return the uh, 
the array without the duplicates in it, or we could move the elements to the beginning like they showed us in the examples. Uh, but in a language like C, for example, we could only move the, the elements to the front of the array and then just ignore the other ones. All right, so to get around this, we're told that we can place the result in the first part of the array nums. All right, so the formal description again that they gave us is that if there are k elements after removing the duplicates, then the first k elements of nums should hold the final result. And, if, and it doesn't matter what is left after the first k elements. All right, so some examples should make this clear. And this example is very similar to this example that we talked about. I just added an extra one right here. And we're going to be going over this example in a little bit more detail when we kind of get into my, my uh, thought process for solving the problem. But real quick again, we have our nums here of 1, 1, 1, and then 2, 2. And then the output should be 2. And then nums should be 1 and then 2. And then these underscores here, uh, we're denoting it that way because we don't care about what those values are. And in my implementation, I'm using JavaScript, but I'm actually going to be doing an implementation where we move the elements in the array, just so people that are using other programming languages can follow along more easily. All right, so here's our explanation. So it should return k is equal to 2, since we have two elements left after re removing or moving the duplicates. And nums should have the only elements if we're removing the duplicates. So if we were to remove them, then we don't have the, you know, just our one and our two here, or the first two elements if we're moving the duplicates um, as one and two respectively, right? So it should have one and two as the, you know, the first two elements, and then all these underscores if we're moving them. All right, so notice how the output maintains the relative order for nums by keeping the elements we care about in non-decreasing order. So that's what they mean by maintaining the relative order. All right, so we're going to keep it as 1 and 2 as opposed to like 2 and 1 there because we want to maintain this non-decreasing order as uh, for the array that that we're going to, uh, to be modifying, right? All right, so and also if we're moving the duplicates, it doesn't matter what we leave after the kth element, right? So again, these underscores here denote that. We don't care what those elements are. And then this example is the same one as this one. I just included it here, you know, for you guys to, to go over later if you wanted to. All right, so now we're going to talk about a way that we can modify nums in place. All right, so, you know, remember that we're trying to get nums in that one, two, and then the rest of the values that we don't care about in this example, right? So that's our end goal. That's what we're trying to achieve here. All right, so one thing that we could do is that we could start at the beginning of our array and then just kind of iterate through it and then compare, you know, whatever our index is with, you know, the next value and then, you know, rearrange the elements uh, if, you know, if it turns out that, you know, we could move like a two to wherever a one was or something uh, to get it into that form that we wanted. All right, so we know that we can only modify nums in place. So we're going to start with our example one and see if we can come up with some way to move around the elements to get that desired output. All right, so initially we have nums of one, 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 two, two, and we're going to take our first element nums, compare it with the second element, and then we're going to take the second element, compare it with the third element, and so on. All right, so we have our first iteration, and up here we just have the indices, so we're going to have a zero, one, two, three, and four um, for our indices up there. And for the first iteration, we're going to compare nums of zero with nums of one, and that's going to be one, it's equivalent to one. So we don't need to do anything there, because remember, we're trying to get it into the form of nums one and two. So here we can just kind of, you know, it's the same, same number there. So we don't have to rearrange anything at this point. And then on the second iteration, we're going to be looking at the nums of one. So at our index one, and that's going to be one. And then our nums of two at our index two, and that's going to be one. And those are equivalent. So again, we don't need to move anything, right? Now, in our third iteration, what we're going to have is we're going to have our nums of two, and we're going to look at our index two there, and that's one, and our nums of three at our index three, and that's two. Now, these values aren't equivalent, right? So what we need to do here is we need to move the nums at our index three to the second spot in our array, which is nums one, right? To get it into that form of nums of one and two. So what we can do is we can set nums of one equal to nums of three. All right, so now that we've ran into an element that's different than whatever element that we've been, you know, comparing 
all of these next elements with. Now that we've ran into a different one, we need to take that and we need to move it to the to the uh, desired place in our array, which at this point is going to be at our index of one. All right. And then on our fourth iteration, we're going to have our nums of uh, at our index zero is still going to be one. And at our index one is now going to be two because remember we set nums of one equal to nums of three. And then at our index two, it's still going to be one index three two, index four is going to be two. All right. So we have nums of three. And that's going to be equivalent to nums of four because two is equivalent to two. So we don't need to move anything at that point, right? So after the fourth iteration in this example, there's nothing left to compare nums of four with. So that's the last iteration that we need. All right. So during our iterations, we had to keep track of our current value in nums, which we'll call nums of i. So we'll give it an index of i. And that was that green value up here. So that was our current value when we were iterating through. Is that green val or that uh, green color here? Um, that was our current value. All right, and then we needed to keep track of the next value in num. So what we were comparing our current value to, and we'll denote that with this uh, with this bluish aqua color right here. All right, so up here, you know, is this this uh, blue color in our nums array up here? That was our our next value that we were comparing to our current value. And we also had to keep track of which element we needed to replace in nums if we ran into an element we hadn't seen before, which we'll call nums of j. All right, so like in our third iteration up here, when we were comparing uh, our, our index two value of one with our index three value of two, well, we've never seen a two before. So at that point, we had to take that two and then move it to our index of one in this case and this would allow us to get it into that form into that output that they wanted of the one and then the two all right so we'd have to keep track of this index right where we'd want to put um the the next value right when we're rearranging where we'd want to put that new number that we've never seen before all right so to implement this loop uh, to implement this, right, so to implement all of these iterations, we'll loop over nums from the beginning to um, the beginning of nums to the length of n to uh, nums minus 1. All right, so, and we're doing that since we get up to our last iteration here. Like, again, like we mentioned up here, there's going to be nothing to compare that last value to, so we only have to go up to the length minus 1. All right, and on each iteration... We'll compare the current value of nums, which is nums of i, with the next value of nums, which is nums of i plus 1. And if they're not equal, then we'll set nums of j equal to nums of i plus 1, where j gets initialized to 1. So that will be, like up here in this example, you know, we would initialize uh, j is equal to 1. So that would be our index of 1, right? So that's where we're going to start. Um, with that value for j. And we'll increment j every time nums of i doesn't equal nums of i plus 1. So that will be the spot where we're going to move, you know, a an element that we've never seen before. So a value that we've never seen before. That's where we're going to move it to. And we also need to remember the case of nums.length equal to 0. So that means that we have no elements in our array. So if that's the case, we'll just return 0. All right, so hopefully... You know, after going over all of this, you guys maybe come up with a solution now. So give it a shot. And now I'll get into my implementation. All right, guys. So now let's get into the implementation. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this over here to use it as a reference. And let me make this bigger. And all right. So... Now, the first thing that we want to do, like we mentioned down there, is we need to handle the case if our nums.length is zero. All right, so what we're going to do is we'll make a const. We'll do a const and we'll call it nums length. And we'll set that equal to our nums.length. And then what we want to do is an if check. So if our if our nums length is equivalent to zero. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to return zero. All right, so that's what we'll do in the case for when our nums.length is equal to zero. Now, if 
our nums.length isn't equal to zero, then we need to implement what we talked about over here. So what we're going to want to do is implement this loop that we talked about. So we'll use a for loop and we'll say for and we'll say i. And we'll start it at zero, start at the beginning of the array, and then we'll do i is less than our, our nums length minus one, because remember that once we get to this last value in our array, we're not going to have any next value to compare it with. All right, so we only need to go up to our nums dot length minus one. And then we'll increment our i here. And now that we have that, what we want to do is we want to compare our current num, so at our index i with our, our index at i plus one. And if they're not equal, then we will, you know, change that, that value um, at our index of j, right? So let's put in our if statement for our if our nums at our index of i, so our current uh, nums, if that's not equal to the next value, so the one that we're looking ahead at, and we'll do that with the i plus 1. So if that's not the case, then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set nums of j equal to nums of uh, i plus 1, right? Now, up here, we can, you know, start our j like we mentioned over here. I'm going to start our j with a value of 1. So that's what we're going to start it at. And then if it is the case that our nums at our current index of i is not equal to our nums at our next, um, the value of nums, the next value of nums, then we're going to set our nums of j equal to nums of i plus 1. And then what we'll do is we'll increment j. So if it turns out that you know, we're going to have a case where we have more values that we need to move in, then we also have to move the value of j. So if we have another, say we had like a three in there, right, then we'd have to increment this value of j to then be able to move that three to the next index. All right. Now, at the end of all of this, you know, when we get through the whole for loop, what we will do is we will return j. All right. So now what we will do is we'll test it out with some input. So we'll say nums of i, and we'll do our example of one, 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 and then a two and a two. And then we'll log this out. So we'll do a console.log and we'll log out our removed duplicates and we'll pass in nums to that. So that should be our k value. And then we'll just log out nums. All right, so we'll save that and then let's run it and see what we get. Okay, so down here we have our k of two and then we have our nums array, which is gonna be our one and our two. And then remember, we don't care about these values over here. All right, so that's looking good. All right, so let's try taking this solution and submitting it to see if it is correct. Okay, and let's submit this, see what we get. Okay, all right, cool. So it works, and yeah, all right. Now, that's it for this video, and be sure to ask questions in the Discord chat, ask questions in the comments below, and you know, be sure to subscribe just went to a brave ad. Be sure to subscribe, you know, share this, um, like it, comment, all that stuff, ask questions, help each other. All right. And I'll see you in the next video.